Hello and welcome to Real Estate and the Adventures of Parenthood with Cindy Pressgrace. So today I am going to be talking about a new chapter. Okay, so why am I going to be talking about new chapter? Okay, so we talk about, we never talk about like the sale of a house. As a realtor, I just went ahead and closed on my first house by myself. I sold it. So that means Yes, I had issues of not only selling the house. It was not selling the house per se. It was I was emotionally attached to the home. So why was I emotionally attached to my house? Because that's the house that I actually raised my kids. Like there were two and four when I moved into that house, when I actually moved to Gainesville, Georgia. So for all of you, if you guys don't know, you guys are just tuning in right now. I lived in North Dakota for 10 years in Minot, North Dakota, and I had been married previously to military. And so I came here to Georgia and I, I grew that little house and it wasn't a little house, but it was a beautiful house here in Mundy Mill. And I finally, I needed, in order for me to actually close on that house, well, like move forward, there's a lot of things that sometimes as a human being we need to do. And sometimes we don't realize that. So This, the meaning of me selling my house meant a lot for me because like I said, I, that's where I basically went through a divorce. I grew as a person. I'm very blessed and I'm very grateful because I went through that situation in that house and, you know, I could have stayed there and I decided not to stay there in that house. I lived, I moved down a mile away from my old house into my new house. And the meaning of this is sometimes when you want to start a new chapter in life, it could be a divorce, it could be a marriage, it could be, you know, graduating from high school, graduating from college, um, dating someone. It was really important for me to make that move as a new chapter because, you know, it. I had hit two years, according to my divorce decree, I had to move out. We moved out of the house May uh, March 15th, 2022, and I did. So I sold my house. I moved into my brand new house. This is where I'm actually doing my, my podcast now. So now you guys see, like, I, I have bigger space if, for those of you who are watching me on the video. And in my case is I had a lot of loose ends. And, yes, like I said, divorce, new career, Everything hit me at once. Breakup, single, learning how to be myself, how to be Cindy, to find Cindy. And let me go ahead and start from the beginning of closing a chapter. And so now going back to this house, um, Lost Creek. I'm naming this house Lost Creek because it's, you're, you're, I mean, the, from the very first start, a house has its own personality. The address has its own personality. Everything has a meaning. And yes, you'll be like, you crazy lady. I'm not that crazy yet. But in this case, when I got here to Gainesville, Georgia, I was lost. I lived in a, in a, in a street called Lost Creek. And well, you understand the significance of that. That is Lost Creek, like, Okay, it's lost. And for me, it was a learning experience because I was actually lost. I started real estate. I was learning how to be a single mom all by myself. I didn't have any support. I didn't have any family. And, you know, I also had to learn of the area. I, I wasn't confident enough. I was afraid, but I had to do what it had to take in order for me to grow as a person. And that was for me so important growth there mindset, uh, you know, learning how to be a positive person versus a negative. So this is how we start with a new chapter and evolving into why I actually sold my house. So now the involvement goes there. I mean, you get the involvement, um, evolving as a person and as a human being. So, okay. Now, I, you know, I, I dealt with um, an ex-husband with alcoholism, um, other things, cheating, affairs, all of that. And I learned how to 
work on myself and let that go. Then after two years, uh, I think, yeah, after almost two years of being separated from my ex-husband, I went ahead and got into relationship, relationship with this young guy, um, nerdy. Uh, we talked about cricket powder. Let's call it cricket, cricket guy. Air Force Two pilot, really, really smart. I was in a relationship with him for a whole year. I gave, I became very vulnerable. I learned to put my walls down, which was really, really important for me. I, because it was, it was not easy. It was not easy to actually go from a divorce that you thought you, you felt insecure, but then go into a relationship that you didn't feel insecure, that you feel secure, you were happy. And all of a sudden that disappeared. So now I'm back again in 2020, end of 2020. Um, I did a lot of growth and growing up. By the end of 2020, December 2020, my uh, cricket told me, hey, you know what? Because you have kids, we're breaking up. And well, he was also being stationed in Japan with my ex-husband. So, yep. And that for me was really, really difficult because I didn't see that happening. I didn't see that coming. So now we actually have the involvement of emotional trauma and healing. So what did I choose for the past two years? It's 2020, now in 2022, I had to find a way of working with myself as an, an evolving, as a better person. But what can I do to actually help myself and grow as a better human being, a better person for Cindy? How does Cindy, how can Cindy learn how to love herself? What are the things that I love doing? And that was during the process of 2021 and 2022, half of it. And, oh, by the way, I also had to learn how to pay taxes too. You're like, wait, what? Keep in mind, I am a 1099 employee. Now I'm actually an S Corp. So that there's a lot of involvement and development during this whole a new chapter begins. It's getting to the point of how can I actually, how did I actually evolve in getting into closing one chapter and starting to write a new chapter? So now I am in 2021, 2022. I basically I paid two years of taxes, which is awesome. 2021, I paid my first tax bill. I found an amazing accountant that I actually can, can help me evolve and as an investor and create that passive income. Now I'm in 2022. Now I'm like, okay, I'm ready to buy a house, but it's not only the meaning of I'm ready to buy a house, but I'm also ready to move on, move forward and not look back. Because they keep on saying, when we actually look at the past and you're driving, right, we have this big windshield in front of us, right? And we actually see that little mirror, the rear mirror, the rear rear, rear view mirror. It's really small. And that makes me think about the things that I've gone in, in from my past. It actually made me look into wider and bigger things, which is actually a better person. A better human being, but not only that, but a better mom and a better friend, a better sister, you know, better relationship with my family. And that's so important. Now I'm in 2022 and now that I've actually healed and I'm like ready to move forward with everything in my life as relationship wise, love life, um, business wise. I wanted to evolve and I wanted to become a better person, but how did I do that? If I, I felt like if I remain in the same place I was and not getting out of my comfort zone, I would have stayed the same. And sometimes we don't think about like, I've seen a lot of divorces that they're like, Oh no, I want to stay with the house. I want to stay with the house. I want to stay with the house. But how much is that holding you back? How many times, especially when you go through a breakup, When you go to a breakup, then how are you actually evolving and helping that as your progress, as your development as a human being? Where do you want to see yourself in the next 
six months to a year, three to five, in three to five years, right? So when we actually take a look at that and we actually become the bigger person, because this is what we actually have to do, we have to become the bigger person in order to evolve. We got to see things in a different perspective because if we don't see things in a different perspective, we're going to stay tiny, meaning we're going to stay in a small minded concept, in a small minded mindset, you know, and you don't want to do that. It's all about perception, too. So. My ex-husband wanted me to stay in this house and I was like, I cannot keep on staying in this house. Nothing wrong with the house. Believe me, I love that house. That house, I love the sun deck that I built. I love the sunning, uh, the screening porch. I love the, the mass, the master bedroom, uh, closet, the, the kids, the mudroom. I love the mudroom. The mudroom is beautiful. So I did put a lot of love into this house and don't get me wrong, but this man is retiring a year or probably less. And I didn't feel it right for me to own a property, even though he has not lived there. He never lived there. I didn't feel it right for me to remain in the same place because I felt like I would be giving him authority to come into my house. And I don't want to do that anymore. I want to, I want to start dating. I want to start doing things on my own. And I've been doing things on my own. Don't get me wrong about that. But it's about like the perception, right? So if I own something with him, it gives him the right to come in whenever he wants to. So now that I have my own house, it's me. This house is going to be built on my personality. Though my house already has a personality, right? It's going to be like, I can get to do whatever the heck I want to do in my house. And nobody's going to ever tell me otherwise. What are you going to tell me? Are you going to tell me something? Do you have to tell me something? I'm looking at you. <laughs> All right. But that's the thing. It's just like, in order for me to actually get there, I actually had to move out of my comfort zone. Was it a lower mortgage? Of course, a lower mortgage on the other house. Did I have to worry about anything? No. Did I want to move? Maybe. Did I like the house that I'm in now? Yes. And I went through so many, so many things, so many emotions. It is an emotional process. But now it's like, I'm super excited. I'm actually going to have the house decorated. I'm going to change this. I'm going to change that. I'm going to add accent walls. But before that, because I was with my ex-husband, I had to be like, okay, so do you think I can do this? Or what do you think? Well, nah, it's going to be too girly. Well, now I can do whatever Cindy wants, right? So, yes, it did take me because of, of that I needed to sell the house. Yes, I and I thought about, you know, renting the house, just staying it. I, I had it rented. Believe me, I had. And because I had it rented, the tenant pulled out. And I'm like, look, they, this company offered me $4,000 a month for my house. I'm like, perfect. I mean, with this and that, I can keep the house. And you know what? I can pay for both mortgages and I still have money left. But it didn't. It didn't work out that way. And I'm like, you know what? Let me go ahead and move into a new. Let me go ahead and move into a new property. Let me just go ahead and just forget about that. I don't want to have anything tied to him. Besides the kids, that's the only thing I have things tied to is because of the kids, which is awesome. You know, I love my kids and they love their dad. But other than that, I don't have to give him anything. I don't have to tell him anything. You know, I don't have to ask him permission. You know how long it took me to actually get a power attorney from him in order for me to actually proceed with a sell of the house? Okay. Take a guess. Nah, let's say a month. And I mean, yes, this man can be butthurt, but now this house is under Cindy, my house. Who's going to tell me anything? That gives me the authority of, I have my house now. What are you going to tell me? Psh, I'm not going to, I can do whatever I want to. I can invite whoever I want to. So now that I can invite anybody I want to, and I'm ready to have that relationship, it's most likely of, 
I'm ready to have a relationship. Now I feel comfortable in actually being able to um, bring someone home or date someone because without that, I wasn't I wasn't comfortable in bringing someone or, you know, just dating someone or, you know, because I was tied to that house. That house, I felt that my, the kid's dad had that authority over me. And sometimes you may be like, well, you know what? That's silly. That's ridiculous. But in my case, it didn't feel like that. I felt like I was being held back because of the name. That house has the name on his title. And I don't want that. So now that I actually have completely sold the house and I've completely moved on to my own house with my own name is where a new chapter begins. I can bring anybody I want to. And he would say otherwise completely. Don't get me wrong on this. I mean, yes, I got the house of the divorce, but I was paying already for that house. And in this case, I'm like, now that a new chapter begins, I want to go ahead and be able to to start fresh. No memories, no nothing. I mean, I want to decorate this house however I want to. So keeping this in mind, whenever you start a new house, whenever you buy a house or whenever you sell a house, it's a new chapter. Whenever you start a new relationship, it's a new chapter. Whenever you start a new job, it's a new chapter. Every chapter that you close, it's for the best. And you may not see it right now and be like, you know what? She left me. Like I got laid off back in 2015, December of 2015. I got laid off on my third trimester of pregnancy and I didn't see it as a positive side. I was like so sad and depressed. And I was like, you know, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? What's now? You know, my, my whole Fear or my whore, whole, uh, not whore. No, we're talking about whores here. Um, whole, like, I needed to find a job. I needed to find a job for my kids, my family. I mean, the, my income was actually being counted that on a monthly basis, you know, especially like we were living paycheck to paycheck back then. But now it's just like, I'm grateful for that. I am grateful for. Everything that I went through my life because it's actually made me a better person and it's actually made me in a comp like I am where I'm supposed to be today, which is amazing. And because if it was not because of that, I would still be working at a hotel, you know, in Minot, North Dakota with three out with three days lockdown because there's three feet of snow. And honestly, I didn't want that life because I was working for someone else. So now because of that new, that chapter closed, I began to discover myself. So it doesn't matter if, if it's a job, it's a relationship, it's a marriage, it's a divorce, it's a death, it's anything in life, anything that you can think of. You know, sometimes we get sick. Okay. You're like, you get sick now. What do I do? You continue with life. You just keep on pushing forward and forward and forward and forward. So that is a new chapter. If you see it this way, it will be, it will be, it will be such an amazing way of learning and knowing things and seeing the shift in your mindset. Because when we actually think about what we really want in life, we do need to keep on moving forward. But sometimes we are afraid. So now I'm going to tell you a little bit of me me selling my house. As I sold my house, I'm like, it's going to an amazing family. And I'm really, really hoping that this house will bless them like they bless me. But I will tell you this now. I am grateful where I am today. Was it a struggle? Yes, it was a struggle. Was I happy? I was happy. Was that afraid? Yes, I was afraid. Did I want to make the move? I did, but I wanted to actually have a combination of both houses, but I know that 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 is uh physically impossible. Um do I miss my neighbors? They're down the road. They know where I live. 
But now I have evolved into a better human being, meaning that I got out of my comfort zone. Things that I've really wanted, I have accomplished it. Now, what else can I do to make a better chapter? In order for me to actually make a better chapter, it's to just keep on moving forward, just writing it. Now, it's everything will come into place. Everything comes into place whenever it has to come, when you're ready. And that's about right. So I hope this with a new chapter begins. It doesn't matter like what type of, if you, you know, if it's a job, it's a, you know, a death, a breakup. It, it doesn't matter what it is in life. You got to think about what do you need to do? What are, what are your accomplishments? What, how are you looking at things? Is it a positive side or is it a negative side? And where do you want to be in life? And how are you looking at it? Are you wanting to grow up? Are you not wanting to grow up? Are you, are you, do you have fear? Are you going through a breakup? Are you going through a divorce? Are you going through something new? Are you going through a birth of a baby? Are you afraid that you're not able to be that amazing parent that you are or that you can actually be? So there are so many things, and I want to actually point this out that I am going to tell you about closure. And closure is so important, and there's things that we don't even talk about. It's about letting go. So I posted this on Facebook the other day. Closure happens right after you accept that letting go and moving on is more important than projecting a fantasy of how the relationship could have been. So in this case, I said letting go and closure is one of the hardest things we can go through, whether it's marriage, relationship, friendship, or a job. Closure and ending a relationship doesn't mean it's all about love, but it falls under all certain, all categories. We don't think about certain things, relationships, even a job. I had a friend that he, he actually quit after five years being in that company, and it was like, I don't know if I want to do it. It took him almost six months to actually quit. And now what? He's really happy. He's so excited about this new company. But that would, for him to get there, there had to be some closure. So in this case, I mean, even a job that we love so much, but, but have to walk away, a divorce that ended, but it's hard to move on and find closure. Yes, sometimes we have these relationships that we think that it's not, that it's easy to actually get closure. We never get closure, but we got to see what we learn from that relationship, where are we at as a person and how we can actually move on. We got to find ourselves first in order to move on. What are we actually happy and what makes us happy? Does it take a day, a week, a month? No, it will take time for you to heal. You need time to heal. Forgive and move on. And sometimes that forgiveness, it is so hard, especially moving on. Some people don't move on. Some people take them years and years and years to actually move forward. So now, no, it will take time. You need to heal. Forgive and move on. Moving doesn't mean getting into a relationship with the first person you meet. Now, okay, let's put this on. Uh, jobs is a little bit different. Let's put it there. Just because a job is something that you need and you actually need to have, have an income. Unless you're rich or you have actually have a sugar daddy or alimony. I don't know. Or you live with your parents or in your parents' basement. But that's, I mean, there, there's so many things. I mean, it's just like closure and letting go doesn't have to be related with divorce and marriage and breakups or relationships. Relationships are all at all levels. You can have a relationship with a dog. You can have a relationship with kids. You can have a relationship with friends. You can have a relationship with, um, you know, business. You know, there's so many things. Um, but it can be a job, a person, a friend, but everything has a reason and it's season. So is it hard? Yes, the process is hard. You'll shed a lot of tears and it can be for a job. I mean, I, whenever I got laid, laid off, I cried a lot. I mean, yes, I am admitting to that. It affected me so much because I was sad. I mean, I had lived not, well, not lived, but I was in that hotel for years. And I mean, it was like three years, two or three years, and I was not thinking of moving. It was so hard for me to quit. And every time I try to quit, 
Believe me, that was a toxic relationship with my ex boss. But be sad. But in the end, it was totally worth it. So look at the things that are advantageous now before closing that chapter or after closing that chapter. Where is it going to take you in life? Because no matter what path you choose, there's a reason you walked away or they walked or they want always something better will come along. All you got to do is believe in yourself and you got this. You totally have this. Keep that in mind. And I want to tell you this again. Closure happens after you accept that letting go and moving on is more important than projecting a fantasy of how the relationship could have been. Because if you are actually living in that fantasy and you thinking that that relationship is just going to keep on, you know, what if I could have just stayed with them? What if I would have done that? It's not going to do you any good. Because if you keep on focusing on that, years are going to keep on going forward and moving and moving and moving. And at the end of the day, it's going to be like 20, 30, 50 years. And you're going to be like, oh, I'm still hooked up with that guy. No, start a new chapter, start a new beginning and move forward and believe in yourself. Regardless, you got this. So this is Cindy Press Race with Real Estate and the Adventures of Parenthood. And I hope you enjoyed this podcast today and talk to you next time. Bye.